no butterflies at the harvest festival today but we do have some really gigantic puckball mushrooms super big wish i had a ruler but i don't <sighs> It's pouring rain this morning, but it's nice now, and we have our Civil War enactors, and a nice little crowd, arts and crafts, plants. And tours of the house, tours of the old historic house. Gotta wear a mask if you want to go inside. Hi. And we're cooking outdoors. Oh, there's our reenactors. We'll see how the fire pit is doing. Oh, that's a classy setup you got there. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Who moved all those big heavy rocks? The county. Well, no, the Did they? Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. That's a good idea. All righty. Um, are you live? Yes. Well, no, it's I'm making a recording. I, I can't Skype from this thing. And these are from our tree. I should do some live. Yeah. Yeah. I want to do some live. Do you know how to do live? Okay. Let's go take a look at the Civil War and actors. Uh-oh, he's walking away. I guess he doesn't want to be on camera. Let's see what he's got. Ooh, nifty stuff. That's fancy. Ah. This one here, it has like a, uh, that one here is an 1850s guy. This is the first one that fired the May tool. It has a little door on the side. It's hard to see, you have to see it. That's where really the came with packets. If you look over here, you can probably see. And that was like the 1855. And that was you they made them until 1860. This one here is an 1861. You notice the hammer's still the same as that one and all that. And basically this one replaced that because they did the cap I have them on the table there. Then they went to the 1860s. Yeah. Now they did away with this little clean out screw. Now it made it easier to clean it. Went out of the anvil. You get away with it. You lose that. Okay. And you went to this. But they did away with the barrel secure bands. So it, they did it like the end field, which I'll show you in a minute. And this was. The, this was almost next to last, and then you get to the 18... Oh, where is it? Oh, it's back here somewhere. It's kind of... Ooh. Hi. Oh, here it is, right here. This one here is the last rifle that they used for the Civil War. That's 1863 Type 2. I'm glad you made it. It was rainy this morning, but it's nice now. Yeah. I like the, the this one here, the is an original. We're doing the fall scavenger. 
British uh, Enfield. That's a reaper. You're doing the scavenger that's hunt? The, that's what the, yeah. This, yeah. Oh, actually, cool. This, this actual gun was shipped here. Either went to the Confederates or the It's an 1853 mark. It's dated, I think it's dated 1853. So they dated the, the, the models in 1853. So that's pretty much, again, this is a reproduction. Of that. That's the only one reproduction. Of then, again, this is a musket. It's an 1842. This predates everything here. And they're basically out. You know, they used those in the beginning of the war. So if you come over there, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how, how we shop. You want to see that? You guys have the socks. Yeah, I just took them. I took them off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
Now, of course, during the Civil War, a lot of times, bayonet really didn't use the hell of a lot. You could stack arms like that. They use it to put candles in it. They cook with it because you couldn't get that close. With the smooth bores, the muskets. When when you said during the revolution, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Actually, that's pretty true. You gotta be close because they're terribly dangerous. Hundred yards or something like that, and less. Or fifty yards and less. Where these can these they can go five hundred. But I would say, basically, they're pretty accurate up to 300 yards, wow. 350. Okay, I'm going to give it, I'm going to just give them the orders, loaded nine times. That was a practice, that's how they practiced the guys, how to fire. They could do three shots per minute, but you're going to go for it. Okay, loaded nine times. Loaded nine times. Ready, load. One. Two. Okay, point. Four, tear card. Oh, sorry. Three. I'm jumped the gun. Three. Uh, tear card. Four, charge card. Five, four, ram. Six, ram card. Seven, return ram. Eight, one. Basically, they go like this. Nine. Shoulder on. Now, I, now he's loaded. I guess you go fire off this time. Yeah, you don't really want to get in front of him now. Normally, in a reenactment, we would never use the rammer because the rammer could fire. But being that we're not doing that, okay. Fire by squad. We only have one guy. Ready. Now, basically ready, he pops the gun. At elevation A. Fire. Shoulder on. Shoulder on. Order on. That's it. Now, just give me a Okay. Are mushrooms on your list? I know where mushrooms are. Yeah, I know where mushrooms are. Let me show you where the mushrooms are. Are you filming YouTube? Now you can't keep your arm like that or any length of time. So the rest of them a little bit, I would say support arms. Get over. I'm support arms. Now if he was if I wanted him to rest, rest, he would grab the smallest stop. And if he was at a pull, he would put his leg back like right that. Uh, now, attention company. Take the hand away. Then he would go, then I could say secure arms. Now secure arms is kind of like on a rainy day. Secure arms. You drop it down. Hold your thing. That's how they carry it in the rain. Support arms. The other, the other thing is uh, shoulder arms. Right shoulder shift. Now, normally, if I say at the double click, you instantly go up the back. Why? Because that gets the right the way from his legs. This way he can run. Otherwise, if it's down here, he can bang, and you know, that, that makes it easier. As soon as he comes to a walk, he will come right down to the shoulder. If I didn't give him any command. But this is just a different way. Shoulder on. Trail on. Yeah. Trail on. A little bit deep. Trail on. Sometimes you have to bait it. I forget to give them an order. And 
I'd say, okay, you know, right face, march. Mm -hmm. Instantly go to that. Because I, I didn't tell him to do shoulder arms or whatever. We would instantly go to that. And that's also when you're marching, a comfortable way of carrying it. It's like, you know, you're marching at the route step means that you're not going by any kind of beats or anything. Every between the left, right, left, 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 left. Order on. Now, there's a in place, there's a parade rep. Parade rep. Okay, that's parade rep. You head your cup. Go back to the order on. And then the other thing is, there's also a. Uh, Parade rest in, in place rest, and there, there's a parade rest in in place rest. Which in place rest means that he has to keep his left foot on line. He could talk, he could turn around, and then the last one is rest. It means he can walk away, but not too far, because if I say if I call, and I say touch your company, get on, you know, form company. You have to have to run. They have to be able to hear me and get there really fast. So that's a demo. I mean, now you know all pretty much what they did. There is also a ground arm. I won't do that because his rifle will get on the wet ground. You know, it was a way that if you didn't stack it like that, they could drop their arms and march. They would do some marching around without the arm. If you get captured, basically, yeah, you turn your right arm. Or, in my case, a sword. This is how you can tell who's the officer, is usually they're carrying a sword. I mean, their uniforms sometimes are hodgepodge, but the guy that's carrying a sword is the officer. These swords are useless, pretty much a ceremonial. They're sharp on the end, just like the bayonet, but you really, they're not like a cavalry sword or saber. So basically, you, you know, it's ceremonial. I can basically stop people. You know, I can make him go forward in some way that I can, you know, because it's hard to hear with the din of firing in the distance or anything like that. So, and the other thing, which basically I didn't do, is you have your bayonet. Okay, fix bayonet. Shoulder, arm. Charge, bayonet. Ah! <laughs> yeah. There is a bayonet drill, but basically, it it's very involved. It's all in French. It, it, uh, General McClellan basically brought it back to France, so a lot of things are still in French. They did do bayonet drill, and they went through all the bayonet drill. But really, didn't get to use it because they didn't really get close enough with the, the type of ammo. Okay. Unfix, fade it. Again, it would be good. For, that's good for stacking arms like that. If you have four, you would have four guys, two ranks. One, and basically, you have a one, two, one, two. That's how they would stack their bayonets, and, and, and they would stand in the line with that. Basically, their camp would be right behind their line in a row so they know where they are. So, all of you that didn't see the firing, I'll fire. I'll go to fire. Okay. Loaded nine times. Again, this is a this is, uh, practice how to load properly. They would do this on and on. Loaded nine times. Load. So basically, you're getting ready. Take cartridge. Tear cartridge. Charge cartridge. Ram. Draw ram. Ram cartridge. Turn ram. Now you notice that he tries to keep his hand away. Usually, you use your pinky. You're trying to keep your hand away from that muzzle. 
because you have to learn that if there's any kind of spark in here, with the spark, you put that powder around down here, it could go off at any time. You can lift the so you really have to be very careful. Okay, uh, prime. Shoulder arms. So that was the light nine times. Now fire. Fire by squad. Ready. Oxy weapon. At elevation aim. Fire. Shoulder off. Water off. In place rest. You only get one shot. That's it. See the smoke? You shoot out a thousand guys firing in a line. Oh, well, yes, it sounds like popcorn. Fire. You cannot see. I actually can't hear it. Put a piece of corn in there with the ammo. It's just one thing, especially a day like today, there's no breeze. It, that smoke Did you look inside the house yet? No, that's just. Guys, here, like. Clark, I knew you were reporting. We were going to uh, go inside and see it. Okay, you've all got masks, so you're welcome to go into the house. A lot of times, the sergeant, you're sergeant. If you have sergeants, that will be your color guard. They, their job only is to protect the flag. They will not get involved in the battle. But if somebody comes after this flag, they'll go out. And if the flag drops, one of them will come up and grab the flag. So, the thing is with the color guard, they're probably the most dangerous part of the team. During the Civil War, because this is the only way they could see. I mean, your company would be, you know, their battalion would be behind you. They could see this flag through the smoke. They would hold it up high and march forward. But again, the people on the other side use this as the focal point. We have to go around. To take around. the flag down. Because when the flag stops, everybody else. Any other questions? Come over. I just those rifles on that park. I need a mask.